Hey, what is up everybody? Killian here bringing you another video, and this time it's going to be over factions, as well as showcasing the Black Baron, the 40 band raid boss in Blade and Soul. So, what factions are is, well, as you could guess, it is PvP. It is open world PvP that you get to choose which faction you are a part of, um, whether it be the blue team or the red team, or it's the Cerulean Order or the Hunian Cult. But... The way they have world PvP set up in this game is that you have to basically opt in for it. What I mean by this is you have to equip your Cerulean outfit or your Cerulean or Hunian cult uniform to actually get flagged for PvP. Other players have to be wearing the opposing, opposing faction's actual uniform for you to attack them or for them to attack you as long as you are in your uniform as well this is a good feature because it lets people kind of choose if they want to be engaged in pvp or they knowingly go go into doing certain daily areas um, where pvp is a high possibility all right so as far as PvP goes, you're going to probably first be engaging in faction PvP early on in, I would say, the Viridian Coast, um, moving towards Jadestone Village and up in the north here near Dragon Scale. This is whenever you're first going to be seeing other people really wearing other uniforms which you will be able to participate in PvP with. However, there are two main locations that I would say that you're going to find PvP the most. This is found in the Cinderlands, um, in the middle here, the sands, the scorching sands. You'll actually see the blue and the red um, little location here, showcasing the tents where there are dailies. This is your main location for, I would say, around level thirty PvP, and even level forty-five. I was coming across it. And then lastly, the location that I'm in, which is actually the Moonwater Plains in the northeast. You all have seen me in this location a lot in my videos because this is one of the, probably the most important zone in terms of high level, high level content currently. So once you go to these locations, you do have to be wearing your appropriate faction uniform. Otherwise, these guys will be all angry and engage on you and kill you. And that's why you have to essentially opt in to doing these dailies. As you can see, these dailies are some of the only things that actually reward soul stones in the game, which is a high level crafting currency, basically. And so this is one of the few ways that you're able to actually obtain these. In terms of open world PvP as well, it's more about PvE in terms of gearing. However, you do want the Moonwater Arena Soul Shield, which I'll post a link to a video where I go over how to go about getting that. So, with factions, there isn't too huge of a benefit to doing it outside of a couple of things such as, for example, you can get the Cerulean Uniform. You can get more open world PvP oriented items, such as the General's Necklaces, which actually give you an increase on negative effects on people, in other words, increased duration of stuns and things along those lines. While on the other hand, you can actually get stun duration reduction against you, so it means you're CC'd less, as well as um, applying more CC to people who are not geared. As far as min-maxing purposes, I'm not sure if this is going to be too big of a deal uh, because I do believe that having the PvE gear will be of a bigger significance in comparison. So, as far as open world PvP, once again, it's mainly intended for your guild, progressing your guild, being able to craft guild items, as well as... Uh, actually go going about getting like certain costumes and things along those lines oh man now i'm gonna move on into the black worm which this is <laughs> it kind of fits in with faction pvp because it is literally right in between the actual <laughs> it's literally right in between the two camps you have the red side over here and you have the blue side right here and then you have the black worm right in the middle so this little, this, well, not little guy, is the raid-oriented boss of the game. And as you can see, there are red people sitting over there. Blue people, pro well, there's very few blue people. 
blew people over there. And so this is a highly contested area because this is also one of the, uh, basically one of the only ways to get some of the better gems in the game, which once again fits into PvP. So you have to actually head on over to um, to the NPCs over here. You have to obtain prestige points, which is actually from killing other players, um, killing other high-ranked players. You have to have the essence of the Black Worm, which drops off the Black Worm, and as you can see, it takes a shit ton of them. And um, you have to have soul stones, which you are once again obtaining more than likely from your daily quests over here. So, I'm going to hop on to another clip where we actually fight the Black Worm, just to show y'all how fucking overpowered this NPC is. Alright, so this is basically me going to be killing the Black Worm and whatnot. It's an extremely long fight. It actually took 45 minutes to complete this damn thing. Um, 45 minutes to complete this thing, starting off with probably around 5 to 10 people. I speed up the clip 4 times faster, um, maybe even more. And <laughs> this thing is this thing was the most challenging thing in the in the beta, and possibly possibly um, will be in the in the actual release as well because it just is it's such a goddamn behemoth of like health and tankiness and if you mess up like twice you're dead basically. Keep in mind like I actually had. Um, around 40,000 health by doing this by doing this boss and miss messing up on one small scale would end up chunking me like I said like half health or so um the blade ma or the blade yeah blade master who was actually tanking this was doing a holy shit phenomenal job because for him to for him to actually sit here and be in front of this thing the entire duration he literally had to have that shit down to an art because if you like I said if you mess up like once uh, you pretty much die. I actually am surprised my stream sat through the entire this entire fight. And once again, guys, this is the NPC that you actually have to kill continually, like a lot of times, to go about getting. Um, as you can see, I die a couple times as well. But this is the the NPC that you're gonna have to group up and kill continually. Like there's gonna be groups on groups on groups killing this boss. Um, to obtain the Black Worm chests, as well as the Black Worm essences, um, which, let alone, you get the chest, and then you have to get the key to open the chest, which is from the Vermilion and Sapphire, like, giant guys, actually further south, you'll probably come across them, um, I didn't want to make the video too long, so that's why I only showcase the Black Worm, but, you know, collectively, from, from start to finish, as you can see, I, I just skipped a large portion of that guy's health. But, from start to finish, I mean, we had maybe, once again, 5 to 10 people. And then, moving on, we ended up with probably about 30 people uh, participating in killing this dragon. You know, and one, one more thing. We, someone lost aggro, by the way, and that's why all hell is breaking loose. The Blade Dancer eventually died, and so now now we're having to like, run all the way back. But, uh, what's it called? For the most part, this, this boss is going to be continually killed every single day. It drops a chest, which ha contains has a chance to contain some of the best uh, jewels in the game, so you will want to actually complete it. Um, the main thing that you want to watch out for is his roar, which is after he does a frontal, the frontal yellow square, and then a front breath, and then you have to you have to skip out of that. As you can see, I'm looking around. Where's my chest? Where's my chest? And since I accidentally rezzed in the wrong direction, the uh, chest did not drop for me. So it does go based off of damage contribution. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Hopefully, you found it informational. Um, make sure to like the video, share it with anybody as well, and then yeah, I will be. Let's see. Sadly, Blade and Soul is no longer in beta. We're waiting on it to come out in January, uh, January nineteenth specifically. If anyone wants to get a Founders Pack while you still can, the Masters Pack is definitely worth it. I'll post a link to it down below. Um, yeah, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace out.